I don't like cranberry juice. Wow, there he goes. One more time. There he goes. Grandpa didn't see it coming. Okay. Yes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. For the 45th time. Just kidding. Warren. Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone. Episode 144. Yes. Yes, 144. Just like every other time. Say it the same way. You keep that rhythmic pattern going. Here's today's card. It's tradition around here to show you the card. But it's not tradition to show you what's on the card. But you'll find out anyway because I'll talk about it. Hello, everyone. If you're listening to this podcast, thank you so much. Thank you for listening. If you're watching this podcast, well, thank you. I must say, this is more of a visual-based podcast, for the most part. Uh, But it is listenable, just like a lot of podcasts out there. This is listenable as well as uh, visual. Uh, um, But this episode, in particular, is probably going to be more of a listening type Okay, I've only got a few clips to show. I'm filming this podcast not too long after I filmed the previous podcast. Because the previous podcast went up late. Because I was busy. Had some stuff to dupe. But this time I'm not busy. I've done my stoop. And check out my shirt, everyone. I eat cigarettes. (laughs) This is a Gus Johnson t-shirt. Okay? If you're not familiar with Gus Johnson, I highly suggest you check Gus Johnson out because he is one funny mofo, let me tell you. You want to laugh? And if you have a similar sense of humor, if you have the similar sense of humor that I have, or as a lot of people have, you're going to love Gus Johnson. And you're also going to love his brother, uh, Sven, S-V-E-N. Okay, Sven Johnson. Right? Yeah. And he also has another brother named Thor. <laughs> How cool is that? I need to... I found... I got one other new sound effect here. But... I don't... That's all I got. I got... I need to get more. It's been... <laughs> okay. So... I honestly don't have that much to talk about in this episode... The majority of this episode is going to be me kind of rambling about bambling stuff. Whatever kind of comes to the old nig nog. Can I say that? By nig nog, I mean the old noggin. Uh, You know. My hair, I should have been wearing a hat. I usually wear a hat. Decided not to this time. What is it? Who cares? Janice didn't fill my cup up. Got my White Sneakers Award 2005 mug. Straight from Jenna Fisher. Okay? She plays Pam on The Office. I got this. She gave it to me. No, she didn't. I bought it. Special edition. And Janice won't fill it up. I'm not mad. I'm not mad, Janice. Okay? You do what you want. You're a woman. And women have all the freedom nowadays. Okay? Because that's the world we live in. We're... Ah... I mean, even just saying that comes across as sarcastic. It probably is a good way to get yourself canceled. So why don't I just stop while I'm ahead? Because everyone's canceled nowadays, right? Everyone! Remember, I remember when... Like, my... I guess one of the first real... Instances... Of this sort of Me Too movement happening was when Tabuscus had his whole controversy. Controversy. You know, I don't want to bring it back up because I respect Tabuscus. And I mean, he may have did whatever it was he did. He may have not done whatever it was he was accused of doing. But that was 2016, I believe. And I just remember when that happened. I have a vlog on this channel from when that happened. And I had a separate video 
talking about what ex- what specifically happened with Tabuscus, but I deleted it because I felt bad for Tabuscus. I grew up watching Tabuscus, okay, amongst many other YouTubers. Uh, if you don't know, YouTube is my life, basically. But you don't know, because no one watches this shit. And the premise of this podcast is to really cover topics that revolve around YouTube, mostly. But I'll talk about other stuff. But when it comes to Tabuscus, he was, you know, he was on top in the game, in the YouTube game, for a long time. And he was he was super funny. He always had a, a way with with words and the way that he speaks. You know, the little characters that he does and his his little singing and all that blah blah. And so when I found out about this it was just like what? It really struck me in a bad way. It hit me unlike any other thing in the world that has ever <laughs> hit me in that way before. I mean, for a few reasons. One, I was ye- I was younger, you know. Didn't have much life experience, and I'm not saying I do now, but... But uh, it was also just, you know, when you see someone like Tabuscus, or whoever you want to relate it to, someone you really respect, someone who you grew up watching, someone who you feel like you know that person even though you never actually met them, when you find out that they are called out for doing something like this, it's so shocking, and it uh, it just hits you in the heart like it's a family member. And so that's how I felt back then in 2016, but now, now, it's been happening so often that when I hear these stories, like Louis C.K. or Aziz Ansari, or, you know, anyone, because everyone is getting called out for something they did controversial in their past, and they're all getting canceled, and it's getting to a point now where I'm becoming immune. It's weird how immune we become to stuff as a society. Because... You think back to when you were a kid or when you were younger and you and you and you look at that time and you might not even realize that at that time the things you're immune to now wasn't even a commonality back then. That's not even something that existed back then. And so if you can realize that and you put yourself back into the past You know, it gives you that nostalgia feeling, like the simpler times. Everyone's always talking about the simpler times, you know? And I'm huge, I'm a huge, I wouldn't say advocate of that, but it's kind of uncontrollable in my head. Like, I, I'm constantly longing for the past because I had so much, so many good memories. But that's another thing. You might have good memories of the past, Because those are the ones that you kept in your head. You have lots... Everyone has good memories of the past. Not everyone. But a lot of people do. And those are the ones that you keep. And so when you think back, you're like, I miss the old days. But that's only because you're thinking of... You're only thinking of the good times. We tend to block out the shitty times. Because we don't want to remember them. And so people will look at today's climate and say, we're living in shitty times, shittier than it's ever been. They, you know, people will think that, but people have been thinking that probably since the dawn of time. It's always a commonality to think we are living in a terrible time, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Okay. 
I think there are times in history that were are just beyond any sort of miserable life that you know we could ever imagine, like the Great Depression, or even just World War II, that era itself. Imagine being in the Great Depression and having to burn money just to stay warm because mo- no one cared about money. You can't you can't put yourself into those times because it's so far beyond anything we're experiencing now. Cuz you see the problems we have now are so minute and minuscule because of the fact that we're living such a good life. We don't have real problems like we would have back in the old days. You know, back in the 1800s, people were just trying to survive. Whatever they could to do to survive. But now we just, we have access to everything. And so when you're living a life, when you live a life where you can have money, and you can have luxuries, you can buy technology, you can buy food at a grocery store, you can take hot showers every night, you have internet, you know, you can talk to someone in China right now if you wanted to. We start, uh, you know, we start adapting our preferences, and our problems in different ways. So now our problems are are reduced to stuff like, uh, you know, just simple shit. I don't have to give an example. Why am I even talking about this? What do I know about this? Nothing. Because I was talking about Tabuscus. Tabi. Toby Games specifically, his Minecraft series, his original one, that was huge for me when I was in high school. I don't know why, I was just, it struck a chord in me, and I don't even know if you could go back and watch it now. Like, I mean, I don't think kids nowadays could go back and watch it and feel the same way I felt when I first watched it. Maybe they can, but maybe not. I don't know. Because Minecraft's been around for long, a long time now. And so when Toby first made his Minecraft series, it was when Minecraft was just getting established. And he's really bad at video games. But that's what makes it good, is his combination of being bad at a video game, but also his his humorous way about him. And you slowly get to see him progress in the game, and you're screaming at the monitor saying, you, you're doing it wrong, you gotta do this. But he figures it out eventually. And you get to watch the development of Fort Buskis, and you feel connected to it. And I felt so connected to it that I actually rebuilt pretty well every home that he made in Minecraft. I rebuilt it on my own uh, Minecraft server. I guess it wasn't on a server. It was just offline, but... Huh? You like cheese? You like tacos? Let's talk about tacos. Okay, that's enough. That's enough of that. I often wonder if YouTube is going to... I hate to say this. But I I often wonder if YouTube is just going to die and go away. And... (coughs) And I wonder if it's going to happen soon. I don't know. For some reason, it just seems like 
YouTube is going to die. It's just progressing in a way that no one enjoys. Everyone's constantly complaining about the state of YouTube now. And it this kind of just goes back to what I was saying earlier about how we missed the good old days. Because if you grew up on YouTube, while YouTube was first developing like I did, of course you're going to long for those old YouTube days. Back in the days when you could still get paid, you had a nice, decent sized audience, and it was... It was about the community. It's gone super, super corporate now where I got hiccups. Where it's not about the community anymore. It's just simply about making money and, f and following the algorithm's demands. And if you don't stay strict to the guidelines, you'll get uh you'll get shit canned you can get your channel banned you can your videos will get demonetized your videos will get blocked in certain countries and maybe all countries and so the the freedoms have gone it's no longer the wild west and why is that Like, it's always, you can use this in an example in anything. It doesn't just have to be for YouTube. Anything where you have so much freedom leads to a point where whatever the societal group is, it leads to them thinking that, okay, we have to implement some sort of rule to prevent this. Which leads to more rules and more and more. And eventually, it's no longer, you don't have those freedoms anymore. <coughs> it's just con it's control there's so much control and I often wonder if YouTube did die and then another platform emerged and if their goal was to have complete freedom <coughs> on the platform if that was their main goal and let's say it worked. Let's say everyone loved it and everyone transferred over to that platform. I still feel like eventually it would get to a point where policies would be put in place and it would just turn into another, you know, uh, strict corporate organization. Is it even possible to have just complete freedoms? I don't know. I think as long as there's some sort of government at play, it trickles down into every other thing that, you know, gains any sort of uh, traction and impact. Right? And so... <sighs> You just got to stay positive. If you like YouTube as much as I do, you have to just... You have to be part of the system in, uh, in the best way that you can. And so I guess one of the other reasons why I would like this podcast to succeed is that I just want to spread awareness of the fact that YouTube is such a powerful thing. YouTube is is amazing. And a lot of people hate it, even though they're on the platform and they're making money on the platform. A lot of people hate it. But it's hard to hate something, you know, that you've been with since basically its inception. Incep is that the right word? Conception? Since its existence, the dawn of YouTube's existence. I've been on YouTube since the dawn of its existence.
Okay. And, you know, you'll get people who say, well, that's just a ridiculous way of looking at it. Um, you'll probably get people saying, what, you know, why are you so attached to a website that posts videos? Well, it's not something that's easy to explain, okay? You just relate it to whatever it is you're attached to. Seems like my furnace is fucking working better than it ever has been. It's like pushing way more air out, and I hope you can't hear it. <laughs> I don't want to wait for my lunch to get colder, but if I do, I'll surely, um, something, something... I don't want to wait for my lunch. <laughs> okay, let's let's move on here. You're probably bored. You're probably sick of listening to me already, aren't you? I know I would be. Okay, I just want to show something that I showed last time. Okay, you see this alien here? This alien video. Holy shit. Guys, Jason is in the Rolls Royce. Look at the stars on the ceiling. <laughs> wow, it's like I'm back home. <laughs> what did you pay for this spaceship? <laughs> okay. It's funny, right? I had no idea. I showed this last episode. I have no I had no idea this was Jason Nash. Okay? If you don't know Jason Nash, he was a viner and then, you know, switched to YouTube along with David Dobrik and blah blah blah. So he's like a forty two year old man. He's in his 40s. I don't know how old exactly, but he's definitely in his 40s. And he hangs out with people like David Dobrik and Josh Peck and all those guys. Uh, but this is him. <laughs> he does a good job. I will say that. He is funny. I've always found him funny. But when you watch him in stuff like, you know, David Dobrik's vlogs and whatnot... I get the idea that he comes across as a bit of an ass. I have a feeling if you hung out with him in person, he would be uh, an ass. An ass hat. I don't think he would be very friendly. But that's just speculation. I don't know. I don't know the guy. I just know that he is funny. Especially in this alien character. <laughs> Wait, I have something to show you. And if you're. Uh, David. What? What are you doing? What? <laughs> <laughs> ew, 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 ew. <laughs> I just don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> ew, ew, this is so fucking gross. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> this just smells bad. I don't know what you're doing. Natalie, it's well, that just is bad. I know. <laughs> My breath always smells like that. <laughs> Natalie, would you mind if I had some of your earth candy? <laughs> sure. Thank you. <laughs> see like he is funny he is f fucking funny dude but uh, I don't watch David Dobrik okay if I was 12 years old I'd probably be watching David Dobrik and I've tried to you know check his stuff out but I, I can't, dude. I can't do that. I don't... Stuff like that is just too cringy for me. And maybe I should give it a second chance. But normally the stuff I watch... Is stuff that I've kind of just... Gradually... Um, organically... Worked my way into. Usually through... Uh, like, I'll find other YouTubers through recommendations of other YouTubers or whatever, you know. And I mostly just watch podcasts now and have been doing that since, like, 2016. So, you know, you watch a podcast, you'll have someone on that podcast that you enjoy listening to. So then you check that person out. You check out their podcast, and then they have people on their podcast, and it leads you to other podcasts, and... Yeah. 
So, so like when stuff like this, when when you know that there's people out there like David Dobrik, who are undoubtedly extremely popular on the platform right now, and they're doing, you know, he's doing amazing. Okay, he's like probably one of the top, if not the top YouTuber out there right now, with in terms of views and likes and all that shit. But that's not enough reason for me to check him out. That's not enough reason for me to like his content. Uh, you know, like I said, I've been on YouTube since the dawn of YouTube, so I've seen the progression of who was popular. And like you think back to the old days when it was Shay Carl and Charles Trippy, those guys originated the daily vlog. Okay, they would they literally originated the daily vlog, and Charles Trippy to this day still holds the world record for most consecutive daily vlogs. He's been doing it for over ten years, and as long as he keeps making daily vlogs, nobody can beat that record. Because he, you know, he's he's been doing it for ten years. Every he filmed a video every day for ten years. The only way to beat that record is if he either stops filming, and then someone would have to catch up those ten years, or someone would have to go back in time. And even though he has that world record, his views have declined significantly. And I st- I can't believe he's still doing it because pretty well every daily vlogger who tried to give it a shot had to either you know they they all gave up in the daily vlogs because they talk about how stressful it is on their life and how impacting it is even Casey Neistat gave up on it because what ends up happening is every day you have to be focused on what you're going to do to make great content for the vlog. So every time you're hanging out with your kids or your family or you know you're going to the park or you're, you're going to whatever it is you're doing, you got to figure out your mind your mind is just set on making turning whatever situation you're do, doing into quality content for people to watch. And so you're not really engaged with your friends and family. You're just kind of using them as, you know, objects for your content. Uh, There's been divorces over it, you know, prank versus prank. There's been, uh, and I mean, even Shay Carl was almost on the verge of getting divorced, you know, because of the daily vlogs, but also because of the fact that it caused him to to drink more and, you know, whatever else. Uh, And then Casey, you know, they all talk about how hard it is on them. And I can't believe Charles Trippi is still doing it, along with, you know, raising his family. And he's in fucking We the Kings. And you got to... The good thing about Charles Trippi's vlogs, though, is you got to see his progression. Because when he started the daily vlogs... He was just, you know, a YouTuber who made fucking sketches on YouTube. And you got to see all his fucking girlfriends. And every girlfriend he's had has been named Allie. And so before he did the daily vlogs, when he was just doing the sketches, he had a girlfriend named Allie. And then, you know, they broke up. And then he started doing the daily vlogs. And he had... Ali Speed, and then, you know, you got to see the de- relationship develop with Ali Speed, and Jeff Takeover was in a lot of the beginnings, and then, you know, they would fight, and then they, you know, used to be roommates, and then they weren't roommates, and then you got to see, you got to see Charles Trippy marry his wife, Ali, you, got, you also got to see Charles Trippy be in uh, Corey Williams' wedding, I think he was the best man in Corey's Will- Williams' wedding, and that was all on YouTube. And then you get to see Corey Williams get divorced, and then Corey, you know, got with Kate, 
uh, whatever her name was, I can't remember her name, but she was also a YouTuber. He kissed her on on New Year's New Year's Eve one year, and that was on YouTube. And then Charles Trippy divorced Ali Speed, and that was all on YouTube. And then you got to see him slowly <laughs> integrate this new Ali that he is now married to and has a kid with. You got to see it all. You got to see his whole life. It's just, it was just so interesting. But yet he has no views. He's got views. He's got like... I think he has at least a million subscribers. But he doesn't have the views. And that's a common thing on YouTube now. Because of the algorithm. And the algorithm is used for the greater good. You know? It's not like YouTube is setting out to destroy channels because they're not following whatever the algorithm wants. They, they're they really just trying to... I mean, I don't know a fish. I don't know for sure, but I'm just... I'm saying this based off of what I've heard from, from all different sides of, you know, people's perspectives on the YouTube algorithm. Like Lex Friedman, he's an actual AI specialist... That's his, uh, fucking, that is his, uh, you know, he has a degree in it, so that's his fucking specialty. (laughs) So, you know, he actually went to YouTube headquarters and talked to the people who are in charge of, uh, of the algorithm. And, you know, I can't remember exactly what he said specifically, but he was under the understanding that the algorithm is designed for the greater good but it's just such a complex idea and it's a complex thing to put in place so complex that it's uh you know it's gonna it's still gonna take a long time before it gets to anywhere where we want it to be and probably even by then we're gonna want some something else and so it's just going to be constantly changing. It's just interesting to see everyone evolve on YouTube. You grow up with these people. And you view them one way. And then as the years go on, they slowly start to reveal more things about themselves. And then you realize how human everyone really is. And how relatable everyone can really be. Like, recently I watched, uh, well, I've been watching Rhett and Link forever. And recently they, on their Ear Biscuits podcast, they talked about their, you know, transformation from, uh, you know, they were like devout Christians, people who, uh, their, their entire lives revolved around the idea of being a Christian who, you know, completely followed the Bible down to a T. And I don't want to get into it that much because they talked about it on the podcast, but, you know, like I used to watch them back in the day and they kept this a secret for years and years. Like they just revealed this this year. And so I always kind of had an idea like, okay, maybe these guys are just super politically correct and they're just trying to you know, be kid friendly, because you. I, I even remember seeing them on uh, some sort of epic mealtime uh, series. It was like a. It wasn't actually epic mealtime. It was you know it was Harley Morenstein. It was on the epic mealtime channel, but it wasn't. Uh, you know, it was some sort of spin off series they had, and it, it involved like drinking shots of liquor, and they wouldn't. And Rhett and Link would not have any alcohol. And that was something that clicked in my head. Like, why won't they, you know, why won't they drink? They're not even on their channel. But then I, you know, and then I just thought, okay, this is just their brand. But come to realize that at that time, they were still devout Christians who did not want anything to do with anything that would cause them to be a sinner. Anyway, it's really interesting. I think you should check out their Ear Biscuits podcast, the most recent ones. 
you'll they it's like a three four part uh three three four parts of them talking about this highly recommend it if you're a fan of red look oh man i'm really tired today like i'm really fucking tired i guess i did kind of talk about the stuff on here spring's coming I like the spring, I like the fall, I like the summer, I don't like when it's so hot that you can't even uh, move without sweating though, and I dislike winter, in Canada at least, because it's so fucking cold, at least in Alberta it is. Anyway, I got uh, just a few little videos here that I'll show, and then... Yeah, we'll probably end this shit. That's my mic stand. Sorry, spaghetti burps. Uh, okay, let's just see how long we've been going for. Okay, this is going to be a shorter fucking podcast then. Not a big deal. Do I even want to show this stuff? I don't even know. Uh, look, you see this? <laughs> it's cool paintings, right? I mean, this is cool, right? You've seen this stuff like this before. Man, this is only 36 minutes? I thought I went longer than that. Guess not. So this is a short one. This is a short one. We'll just end with this here. Actually, no, we won't. There's one other one I want to show. Stop it! These guys are playing ping pong in their fucking warehouse. <laughs> I just wonder how long it took to do this. What is this podcast? Okay, so I guess I should I should start explaining these videos for the audio listeners. So it's sitting here in silence when it's a gif. The video I just showed was, you know, these two guys in a warehouse. They're playing ping pong, and every time it switches to them, to the opposite person hitting the, hitting the ping pong ball, they have a different object in their hand used to hit the ping pong ball. It gets crazier and crazier. Okay? Gosh. Let's end with this. This episode wasn't that great. I know. I'm just really tired. Because I was, you know, I just finished what it was that I had to do, which was working. I was working. Had to get up at 3 a.m., got back at around 8 o'clock. And, you know, you got time to shower and eat and then uh, poop. Well, poop, shower, eat. And you got to go to bed because you got to wake up at 3 a.m. again. I had to do that for more than a week. So I'm still a little bit tired. Next episode. Next episode, I'm going to prepare, prepare a little better. Okay? So don't you worry. We're going to end this episode with a clip from the uh, Bad Friends podcast with Bobby Lee and Andrew Santino. Highly recommend it. This is the kind of shit you're going to see. All right. <laughs> Woo! So for the audio listeners, uh, what happened there? Well, Andrew Santino pulled his trousers down, stuck his ball sack out. Well, they were still in the underwear, but he kind of, you know, clumped his ball sack. And maybe his dick was in there too. Threw his underwear out of his pants, and Bobby gave a little kiss. <laughs> I know people out there who would see that and stop watching them because of this, but I think that's just funny. Okay? Whatever. That's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast. I hope you um. enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, murder that mel bell that bell 
Where did that bell button? Please, just stab it as many times as you can. And I uh, hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Goodbye.